So tell me what happened with that vote in the House where the Liberal stage a vote and then you lost it. Now there's, because my perspective is that only two things could have happened. Number one, in terms of abortion and, the, and, the, and the, those issues, either the party is so disorganized they couldn't pull it off, or number two, secretly the Liberal Party does not value this because they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So The second of those is, is, is dead wrong. I, we, we, was there a lot of abstaining um, uh, uh, liberals who did not vote for this, and you needed them to vote for you? George, I had a bad day at the office. <laughs> let, let, let's be clear. Yeah. But on the principle, remember how this started. The prime minister comes out with some cockamamie idea that he wants to help maternal and child health. Actually, I think that's a good idea, but only, only if you put full reproductive health services out there. That's been the Canadian position for 25 years. So I got up and said, well, are you standing with what Canada stood with for 25 years? If not, there's a problem. There's a real problem, in fact, because women are dying in childbirth. We've got to improve their, their health. We've got to offer them all the services, and that includes termination of pregnancy. And I know that's controversial. There be, not everybody in this room will even agree with us. But I believe passionately that we have to provide women with, you know, uh, birth control with good sex education, uh, the right to terminate pregnancy if you know the doctor feels it's not. They do. But can and, you get your party put, to do that? And I, we put that all in the window, mm -hmm. uh, and then we had a bad day at the office. I don't think the party is actually divided on this. I think the mass majority of the caucus believes it. But remember something else about leadership. This is a passionate moral issue for some Canadians, mm -hmm. and I'm the kind of guy who respects differences of opinion. There are conscientious differences of opinion. Uh, you know, three or four people in my caucus who find this a really tough issue to go with us on. And I, and I just feel I can't compel on a matter of conscience. I can compel and crack the whip on lots of issues, mm -hmm. but not on an issue touching fundamental moral and even religious principle. So sure. there we are. So we lost narrowly, but remember how this comes out. Hillary Clinton gets up and says, you can't, Canada, you can't come to the G8 with a credible proposal on maternal and child health unless it includes full reproductive rights for women, which is where, which is, we're in this discussion because we led on this issue. Sure, and, 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 and the only reason I'm staying on this issue is because I, it's less about the details, although I do think that you, you, if you determine something as a, as a human right, then you have to crack the whip. And I don't care what your party's mm -hmm. religious convictions are or moral convictions are. It's either a human rights issue or it's not. And people have to stand by yeah, you know, what they George, want, right? I rarely disagree with you, but respectfully would disagree with you on. There are two rights in question here. The right of a person to stand by his convictions on an issue like abortion, right? And a woman's right to choose. I've made the party's position very clear. A woman's right to choose is crucial in this mm -hmm. reproductive health debate, and I will stand for all the rights that that implies. Right. But I cannot silence a person who comes to me, looks me in the eye, and says that a matter of conscience, I cannot go with you on the abortion yeah, debate. That's right. And a leader has to has to make his, the party's position clear and, and, and allow someone to speak on an issue of conscience. And that's a big dilemma that's gone back through the history of our leadership, and, and I have to balance those principles, but have no doubt where this party stands. All right, so, and, and this is not a loaded question, because I'm just curious about the mechanics then. If that's the party's position and you as the leader, that's how you feel, what does any of that matter if, when it comes down to a vote, mm -hmm. you can't get because the House of Commons doesn't vote in favor. So I'm just curious, the mechanics for a leader, I don't care what the party stands for if they can't do anything about it mm. in the House. So how do you, how do you figure that out? We, we came a couple of votes short, George. I've made it very clear. I never, <laughs> ever want to see that happen again.